Hey, what's up everybody, EFI here. So I have a 2015 3.5 liter EcoBoost that developed a coolant leak and I uh, ended up pulling the turbos out to replace all those coolant lines. I figured while the turbos were up, might as well rebuild. I've got about 110,000 miles on the truck. I don't have any issues, but I really don't wanna mess with pulling the turbos again if I don't have to. So what I found is Ford does not offer a rebuild kit for their turbos, they just replace them. There are companies out there, uh, the one that I particularly chose was CR Performance or CRP. These companies offer a billet assembly to rebuild them. But aside from the instructions that had to do primarily with the shaft installation, I really couldn't find much about this turbo being rebuilt on YouTube. Anyway, so I was nervous doing the first one uh, because I couldn't find anything online about it. Once I completed it, I realized it wasn't nearly as bad, but I figured I might as well make a video to show anybody else that's interested in doing it. I don't think I'm the only one that's rebuilt these turbos. I just can't find any videos of anybody doing it. So the kit was about $600 for the one that I bought, and it does come with the balanced wheel assembly. Uh, for the record, this is my old one uh, that came out. It looked okay. I mean, it's got some buildup uh, on the turbine side and whatever the case is, but all in all, it was in pretty good condition. And then it also comes with this rebuild kit. So the rebuild kit comes with a bunch of parts and pieces, right? But there are no instructions. So if you're not paying attention as you take the turbo apart, you are likely to miss one of these pieces or forget where it went, whatever the case is. Another reason why I wanted to make this video because the first time I did the, the turbo, it took about six hours. I don't think it should take that long, but uh, I was very deliberate in making sure that I was able to put the whole thing back together. So real quick disclaimer, number one, I am a hobbyist mechanic. Uh, I am not a professional by any means. I do this for funsies more than anything, but I also like just knowing what's going on with my trucks. Also, a uh, big thing, since Ford does not rebuild these or offer rebuilds, there's really no torque information available for the turbo itself. You might be able to find it at like BorgWarner.com or something, but as far as just knowing what these different bolts are supposed to be torqued to or what the collar is supposed to be torqued to, et cetera, there's really nothing out there. So I ended up just using the two thirds, one third rule for what it's worth. So anyway, enjoy the ride, let's get started. Okay, so here's all the tools that uh, I used. Everything that's on the orange mat uh, were definitely required, absolutely needed them. Anything that's on the outside was beneficial to have, but would not be required to complete the task. So starting with the two torque wrenches, right? this is for the 160 inches on the water fitting. This is for the eight and a half to nine inch pounds for the uh, rotating assembly. Snap ring pliers your arc or degree torque indicator. A couple of different picks to kind of get access and pull things apart. 10 millimeter wrench. A hammer to separate the housings from each other. And uh, sometimes it's better to use a soft blow. So if you have a soft blow, that's probably better, but you may have to get some pretty hard hits in there to get those housings to separate. And then uh, assorted sets of little needle nose pliers just kind of get yourself into places that are hard to reach or difficult to reach. Obviously all my different socket extensions and whatnot. Sockets that I needed were three quarters. I believe that was for the water fitting. 19 millimeter, I don't remember what that is, I'm not gonna lie. 10 millimeter, that was for most of the bolts that held the housings together. And then the eight mil, which the eight mil was for the shaft assembly, as well as the two bolts that went on the heat shield. Uh, I had a bunch of different conversions, uh, up and down step ups and step downs, and those were actually primarily just to use because my uh, degree indicator, my torque indicator is actually in half inch and it needed to go on an eight millimeter. Or so just needed to have those to make it work. And then the extra stuff that uh, always is beneficial to have, obviously gloves, if you're having to heat stuff up or grab stuff that's dirty, Use some latex gloves, whatever the case is. Cleaning materials, uh, obviously if you've got degreasers and whatnot, you'll wanna use those. A pair of tweezers were beneficial for pulling the washer out and a couple of the components on the interior of the shaft assembly. Naturally some power tools. <clears throat> and then for chemicals, I used a brake cleaner, penetrator, heat, assembly lube, WD-40, degreaser, and uh, probably an entire roll of toilet paper, or excuse me, paper towels. So this pretty much uh, concluded all the tools that I think I needed. Nothing else comes to mind. Uh, hopefully you've got all these available. And if you don't, then uh, you may wanna either get your hands on some or just be prepared to take a little bit longer to get the task completed. No worries. 
Okay, so to remove the wastegate, right, the first thing is we've got these three bolts here. We're going to have to get those out. But then before we do that, we need to ensure that the shaft is ready to come out or the actuator rod. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pull this clip here. Uh, one side is already pulled, but I put, put it back on so you could kind of see. It's a very simple design. It's not that difficult to figure out once you actually physically see it. But there it is. Used to pick. Basic pick will work. And then on the rod actuator itself, it's got threads that go all the way down and threads that go all the way to the end. And the reason for that is so that you can adjust the wastegate. So the wastegate is basically how you control how much boost is running into the engine or getting pushed into the engine. Uh, because the wastegate of the valve on the inside, once you start building pressure, it pushes against a spring and a diaphragm here. And this actuator pushes out, opens up the gate, and that allows exhaust gases to bypass the turbine. Hence, that's how you control the overall output from your turbo. Uh, we're not going to get into boost creep and all that other stuff. But from the basic premise... That's what that's for. So if you reinstall this and you reinstall in a different position, you have changed the geometry of the actuator and you could either uh, basically put in an underboost condition or an overboost condition inadvertently, which can throw out all sorts of codes if you're not trying to do that or you, know, you don't intend to. Me personally, I'm not trying to add more boost or get more power right now. I'm just trying to do a standard rebuild. So I took a piece of tape and put that tape right behind this uh, inner nut, if you will, to kind of hold that in place. It doesn't hold it, but it allows it to where it won't thread any farther back down. And once you get that put on there, I'm gonna go ahead and break the other side. Uh, I already broke this for the record, um, but it didn't take more than probably five or 10 pounds to get it broken. Slowly thread it out. And now the actuator is free to come out of the wastegate assembly. And obviously we had these three bolts right inside here. We're on this side. We're gonna go pull that one and this one. And then one more on the other side. Okay, and the wastegate should be able to just kind of slide her on out. You have to work with it to finagle it a little bit, but she'll get there, I'm sure. And there it is. The wastegate has been removed. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and pull off the turbine housing or separate that from the rest of the assembly. First thing we need to do is remove this clamp or this collar, whatever you want to call it. It's a 10 millimeter. I'm going to go ahead and use my absolute favorite tool in my garage. I've already broken it loose. Uh, for the record, I haven't used any sort of penetrant yet. I haven't need, needed to, but we might uh, eventually, if I do, I'll let you know. Oh, yeah. All right, so on the other side of the clamp, this one does have a hinge. It's not a single piece, right? So we're able to just remove the entire clamp assembly. And that kind of exposes the flange where the two pieces mate together. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a hammer and you're gonna lightly tap around the turbine housing, making sure that you don't hit anything of importance, right? Which is not nearly as uh, common uh, as it would be on the compressor because there's a bunch of mounting points and all that. But effectively, you're gonna see this crack here. You can spray some penetrant in here, uh, in here if you want to, kind of help open it up. But all you're doing is you're, you're hitting the uh, turbine housing to slowly separate that from the rest of the housing. So we're gonna go ahead and get this started now. Good old kitty blaster. Time to get some more. Starting to go a little bit of a crack. You probably can't see it on camera though. Eventually, it will come apart. You just have to keep working on it. You can probably see it now a lot better. It is opening. Now, as you get closer, make sure that you uh, don't hold this really high over the ground because it will break. But depending on the condition of the turbos, it may actually separate um, and fall freely. And you don't want to do that because even though you're going to be replacing the shaft system, you don't want to add any undue stress onto the journals or any other component of the turbo. So, like I said at the beginning of the video, patience is key. Take it slow. And I'll figure it out. All right. Get in there. I'm 
almost. You can definitely see it now. At least I was drinking him. And there we go. Now it has to slowly come apart. Again, trying to make sure that I don't put any. Oh, and that is not what you want to do. Hopefully it uh, didn't do any damage. And it still looks straight. So obviously you can see I did it and it just kind of fell apart. Definitely don't want to do that. Uh, better luck to you. Okay, so to remove the compressor housing, right, on the back, there's five nuts, or excuse me, five bolts that uh, hold the central housing to the compressor housing. We've already removed two of them. These two plus this one were part of the wastegate assembly that we removed in the beginning of the video. These other three are the other three that you need to remove. Once you remove them, they kind of remove that, uh, that clamping effect or that clamping force that holds the central housing onto the compressor housing. So once you remove those three, this is in theory ready to come right out. Now it's probably got a little bit of corrosion in there, so it's not just gonna slip out, or at least it shouldn't. However, when you are removing the central housing from the compressor housing, it's incredibly important that you observe. On the inside, although I don't know how well you can see it, there are the blades for the compressor and the tolerance between the compressor wheel and the, um, the housing wall, if you will, is incredibly tight. And so the concern is, when I was removing the turbine and it kind of dropped, um, the, the nature in which the turbine attached to the central housing, it had a lot of laxity, it had a lot of play. Not so when it comes to the compressor. So if you do drop this and it's even uh, by a few degrees off center line, you will scrape or scratch the inside of that surface. And that can induce uh, vortexes, vortices, and then it can basically interrupt that smooth flow of air as it comes in. It's a big deal. So once you remove these three bolts, it is just very important that you uh, ensure that when you're pulling it out, you're pulling it out straight. You will see the, the housing for the compressor wall on the inside once we remove this. But um, before you continue and remove these bolts, make sure that you are prepared to hold this in a very steady manner as you separate it so that you don't uh, incur additional damages to the inside of your walls. So second favorite tool, uh, I already broke these loose, but we're gonna go ahead and pull them out. There's one and uh, two and three. So uh, those are 10 millimeter, by the way. Sorry, I probably should have told you that before we started. And then effectively, you're just gonna kind of start working it out. Now you can, if you want, you could use a hammer, but what I would recommend using is a, a soft blow or a plastic blow. Don't use a standard ball pane because a lot of this is all mating surface that is required to ensure that the turbo properly seals when you reassemble it. And then the last thing we're gonna talk about is the plays. It actually works out that we replace this because there are two types of plays when it comes to your turbos. If you ever were curious, right? You've got what's called lateral play and axial play. So lateral play is if I were to grab this keeping in mind that the shaft is going all the way through, if I'm able to move it back and forth like this, <clears throat> that's radial play. Now there is a little bit of radial play. We're probably talking three or four thousandths, a very small amount. It's not a big deal, but it is there. Now that being said, <clears throat> just because you have uh, radial play doesn't mean that the turbo is bad. Uh, it, there is a tolerance, so maybe the manufacturer says you can have up to five thousandths of radial play, which if I had to guess, I would say this has probably got, yeah, between three and four thousandths. I can feel it. You probably can't see it on the camera. But the more important play when it comes to turbos is what's called the axial play, which is this direction, right? And again, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, but I can definitely feel it when I move uh, back and forth. And the reason for that is because there's a thrust bearing inside. And that thrust bearing, as you as it you know, moves back and forth during uh, use, it wears out and it, it creates a larger space for the oil that has to cover down, et cetera, et cetera. So um, originally I said that I didn't have any issues with these turbos, but actually after taking this apart, I'm glad that we are doing it because um, it, it, it may have 5,000 miles left, it may have had 50,000 miles left, but um, it definitely is gonna work out. On to the next. Okay, so one more thing that kind of came into came to mind after I turned off the last video. Um, like I said, it's very important that you ensure that this comes out straight. But what I ended up doing is I ended up taking those bolts that we pulled out and I put them back in. They're not the same positions, but they're enough to kind of give 
uh, a good amount of coverage across the disc. And what I would do is I would run those in and then I would back them off maybe a quarter of a thread and then I would grab the housing, take my soft blow, and I kind of lightly tap. And I basically got to the point to where it has all broken loose. Um, and that was obviously in combination with the PB blaster or some sort of penetrant. And I don't know how well you can see it, but it is finally loose. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and pull these bolts back out. And we're going to ensure that it doesn't separate while we do that. Get those out of the way. And then in the best way possible, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up straight out or straight up. Now, take a look down there. Obviously you can see there's a little bit of minor scraping and I can't tell if that was me just removing it or if there was contact at some point. Looking at the wheel, it doesn't look too bad. There's no damage. Um, there's no uh, obvious impact with debris, which is good. But uh, I definitely see some soot, or I don't know, maybe some some carbon buildup. I'm not sure what that is, but definitely a discoloration. But anyway, we have successfully separated the compressor housing from the central rotating assembly or central housing. Um, and then this is where all the magic is for everything that uh, we purchased to upgrade and rebuild this. So we're going to go ahead and take this uh, compressor housing. We're going to put it off to the side next to the turbine housing, and we will get to that later. Okay, so this, for the record, is the passenger side turbo. And I believe I said at one point in time that these are reverse thread, but they're specific to each side because of the mounting, the way that they're installed, they will tighten as they spool. So on the driver's side, it is a reverse thread. So uh, righty, loosey, lefty, tighty. Whereas on the passenger side, which is this turbo, uh, the threading is standard. So it's lefty, loosey, righty, tighty. So the first three things we're going to do is we're going to remove the two failed uh, water fittings. These are ultimately what led me to take this whole system apart. We're going to remove the O-ring for your unison disc or whatever you professionals want to call this. And then we're going to go ahead and remove the nut so that we can remove the compressor wheel, the unison disc, and then start working on the innards. So first things first, uh, the water fittings are a 19 millimeter. So let's go ahead and pull those out. Yes, I did break these before we started the video. And then real quick, there's a little rubber O-ring here and then there's a rubber O-ring on the inside. Those are the, those are the components that fail. So you can get those from Ford. I think they're like $15 a piece. You'll need obviously two for each turbo. And then uh, I'm going to get the 10 mil on there so we can remove this nut from the main shaft. Ooh. Another thing to consider, obviously, you want a pair of gloves uh, so that you can hold this in place and remove that nut. I'm just not too worried about that nut because we're going to junk it once we get this whole system replaced. And then the last thing is the O-ring. Uh, the kit does come with this O-ring, uh, but we're actually going to start laying out components in the order in which they came off because it does help you kind of keep track of what came off in, in one order and it kind of helps you just keep track. Uh, so if you don't want to have to rewatch this video or make your own video, you can remember, oh, this is what I did. So the next step is we're actually going to have to heat this. Uh, you can use a torch or a heat gun. I have a heat gun and it works well. You don't have to get it very hot. You just kind of have to hit it with heat for, you know, 10 to 15 seconds and then it just kind of slips right off. So let me go ahead and get that started. Okay, so I did start using the heat gun on this and it just wasn't getting it done. So I went ahead and pulled out the old torch and we're gonna try it again on camera so you can kind of see it, right? We just spin it, give it a little bit of heat. The torch right here and then twist it off and there it is. It's gonna come off. I'll slowly work it. Let me tighten back up. Let's have a little bit more heat. Like butter, just gonna slide right off. Does it feel getting stiff? Let's get a little more heat.
and we're off. Put that in a safe spot. All right, to disassemble the central housing, we're gonna start off with the unison ring, which just kind of slides right off the shaft. Maybe a little bit. We'll put that back down. And then inside there, there is this rotating piece. And to get that rail, you just kind of push it out. And then the disc is by itself. And then on the inside of here, I don't know how you can see that, probably not very well, but there is a small ring in here and that actually acts like a piston ring. Uh, that component is replaced in the kit. And continuing on, there's a small ring here. I'm not even sure what you'd want to call this, but it's like a washer. And it's got a tab in there that allows you to maintain proper orientation when you reinstall it. This is not replaced, so don't damage this. Next is going to be what's called your thrust washer. Now your thrust washer uh, is in a very important part of your oiling system. I took it out and maintained the orientation. Uh, obviously, it's got the cutouts where you can maintain the proper orientation, but if you flip it to the other side, you're gonna see this really small channel here. This small channel actually mates to this hole right here. So the thrust washer is the part of the axial play system, and that oil comes up and it lubricates the inside of this. So when you reinstall the new one, you need to ensure that this channel is actually applied against or placed against the oiling hole. If you put it backwards, then it won't properly oil the turbo and you'll be buying a new turbo uh, rather quickly. Next is gonna be a small washer. Now I use a pair of tweezers because it's a lot easier and the washer is a replacement component in the uh, rebuild kit. So don't worry too much about damaging it. Just don't uh, damage external components as you pull it out. And then the next item is, it's kind of like a slip ring. I don't know what you would really want to call it. Let's see if I can get some better light here. So there's a small ring here and it, it acts like a slip ring as in is it's expanding, but there's no holes. So you can't use like snapping pliers or um, any specialty tool. You literally just have to kind of grab it with pliers and then you apply inward pressure so that you can pull it out of a groove in there. Uh, now for the record, you can actually pull the turbine housing out at this point. Uh, effectively, as soon as you remove the compressor wheel, this whole assembly comes out. But depending on how deep you get into this, um, you may need to break apart some of this buildup. So there's a lot of carbon buildup on this particular shaft. So it actually didn't want to come apart uh, until later in the process. But just remember, once you remove the compressor wheel, the entire shaft can actually be removed. It may help you, it may not. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about these here in a minute, but I'm actually gonna go ahead and put the camera on pause while I work on this ring, because there's about four or five more pieces down below this that you need to replace before you put the whole system back together. So we'll see you then. Okay, so I went ahead and got that uh, ring removed. I kept calling it a slip ring, and I'm sorry, I meant snap ring, because uh, it, it acts like a snap ring. It just doesn't have the holes where you can use an actual tool. But there's a close-up of it. Hopefully you've got a relatively decent lighting on that. Let me see if I can get that all better. Uh, so again, it's in a groove, and when you're physically looking at the tool, or excuse me, at the component, it, it makes sense on how you get it out, but it can be a pain in the butt. Now, uh, I used a pick and a pair of pliers, and when I finally got it out, it took off and it went into a corner somewhere. This ring is replaced in the rebuild kit. So if you actually lose that, don't worry too much about it. Just ensure that you don't damage the groove when you're in the process of removing it. The next part we're gonna talk about is a, like an orientation washer. I'm sure there's a <clears throat> far more professional word for it, but I'm not exactly sure what to call it. Uh, but eventually it's got grooves and those grooves are gonna sit in the main bearing. And we'll get to that in just a second. For the record, this is also replaced in the rebuild component or rebuild kit. So don't worry too much about that. If you scratch it, get it out, no worries. Just don't damage any of the main components here. Then the last thing to get out, is gonna be your main bearing. Uh, now mine's fortunately sliding right out. It's just a, basically a long barrel. And then you'll notice that there are grooves or cutouts and that plate that we just pulled out kind of sits in there and holds it in place. So that's your main bearing, or that's what I'm gonna call it anyway. And then you basically got the central housing broken down to its most basic um, 
form, although there is a snap ring on the inside that you need to replace. That snap ring actually holds the main bearing in place. It doesn't allow it to go too far down. It basically holds it flush right there. Now, a uh, very common tool, hopefully you have that. I didn't think about that in the beginning of the video, but you will need snap ring pliers to remove that, and there is a replacement in the rebuild kit. So effectively, we have now broken down the central housing to its most core component. At this point, we would go ahead and start replacing parts if necessary. We would clean the components, get them ready for reassembly, etc. And that pretty much concludes the disassembly of this EcoBoost Turbo. Let's go ahead and get back into rebuilding it. Okay, so here's all the components for the CHRA. Everything's laid out in the manner in which it came out. And to reassemble it is basically just reverse order. A couple of items I wanted to go over with uh, before we actually get into the reassembly. On the turbine wheel, there is this piston ring or this, this sealing ring. Make sure that you put the new one on the new shaft before you reinstall that. It's probably one of the first steps you want to do. And that is this piece right here. And then obviously we've got this O-ring that's been replaced. And this rotating assembly, I think it's an oil seal uh, of some kind, just kind of helps prevent friction uh, building up uh, on, on the inside of the turbine wheel. That does not get replaced, obviously, so make sure you get that all pretty well cleaned up, nice and smooth and ready for reinstallation. Then the snap ring is replaced right here. Your main bearing is replaced. This orientating clip is replaced. The snap ring that's not a snap ring, that's replaced. This washer is replaced, so make sure you get that cleaned up. The thrust bearing is replaced, and this orientation clip is not replaced, so make sure you get that cleaned up. And then this small bezel that went inside of the unison ring, there is another piston ring or, or a, a ceiling ring that goes in there. It does come with a replacement in the kit, but uh, unfortunately I snapped this one in half getting it out. It was quite difficult, so obviously when you're removing that, whatever tools you use, pick pliers, just do your best to make sure you don't damage the inner groove in there. And then the main gasket that goes on the outside of the housing. And then uh, compressor wheel, part of the assembly. And the nut. So we'll get to this. This is a pretty important part, but we'll get to that uh, later time when we're almost ready to complete the entire project. So I'm going to go ahead and move everything aside, get everything ready, and uh, we'll go from there.
Okay, so now we're about to put the compressor wheel on and uh, a couple things you need to keep in mind. This is a balanced shaft assembly from the factory and they do have some markings. There's some uh, marker here and what's most important is you're gonna look right here. I don't know how well the camera is gonna be able to show that, but there is a small notch, like a Dremel tool or some kind of a marking on there, right? On the shaft assembly, on the very top, you're going to see um, the same mark. So basically, when they put this on the machine and they get it all balanced up, they take a small tool and they kind of make a line. Uh, so when you're reinstalling it, it's important that you ensure that this balance mark matches the balance mark on the shaft after everything is complete. And that gives you the maximum balance uh, possible. So the very first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go ahead and heat up the compressor wheel so that it will slide on properly. We'll use a torch for that. It doesn't take very much, again, just kind of a little bit to slide it on. And then the next step is we're going to torque this to eight and a half, between eight and a half and nine inch pounds of torque. And then we add 50 more degrees of rotation. So um, it is my recommendation that you continue to maintain a hot compressor wheel during this entire process, because as soon as it starts to uh, cool down and, and retract, uh, it's gonna get a lot harder. And the number one reason that people have to buy new shafts is because they strip these threads. These threads are very small, and you'll see obviously when you get your own. But uh, that's the next step. However, uh, I found this to be much easier when my wife was helping me. She was able to just kind of hold on to it and stabilize both the turbine and the compressor wheel while I did the torching and the torquing and the uh, uh, all the other stuff. So I'm actually going to go ahead and go grab her and uh, see if she can come give me a hand so we can get this ready to reassemble back into the complete turbo tonight. See if we can get this bad boy reinstalled tomorrow. <laughs> So the central housing has been completely reassembled and is ready to go. Um, obviously, so we had to make a couple movements and, and maneuver. Um, my wife would basically kind of cup the turbine wheel and then she would hold the compressor blades because I found on the first turbo, as I would torque this, it would actually move. And you want to ensure that those blade, that mark matches the mark up top. So essentially, if I was able to take a pick and show you, that line goes straight down from here or straight up from here all the way up. To right there and that means that it's at its peak balance or it's closest to its perfect balance as possible so got the o-ring on there at this point in time we would go ahead and reassemble the turbo as a whole which we're going to get to in just a minute okay so we have all the remaining components minus the turbine housing 
I'm actually not going to reinstall that right now because I need to get the oxyacetylene on it to pull those studs and replace that inner gasket. And I don't want to have this all done, uh, put together while I'm doing that. So obviously we've got the CHRA, we've got the compressor housing. We've got the water fittings, which is the original reason why this all got taken apart. The wastegate, the heat shield, these three bolts, which are the other half of the compressor housing, and then our clamp. So for the record, uh, these, they have a torque of 160 inch pounds, uh, which equates to about 13.3 foot pounds if you don't have an inch pound torque wrench. So we're gonna go ahead and install those, and then we're going to install the compressor housing, put the wastegate on, the heat shield on, and then I'm just gonna protect the uh, turbine blades until I can get that reinstalled. But well, then we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, again, reminder, for the clamp, there is no known torque. I don't know what that is, and it's not available, uh, at least from what I could find online. These three remaining bolts, as well as the three bolts that go on the wastegate bracket, those are also unknown, uh, and, and to include the heat shield. So all of those bolts that hold everything together, I have no idea what those torques are. If you can find them, that'd be great. Uh, the only torque that I know of for a fact is gonna be obviously the uh, balance shaft assembly that we were working on, and then the water fittings, because those are a common part that has to get replaced. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Just remember that when you are reinstalling this, you, at least in my video, I put a mark, so you can barely see it now, but there's a mark right here. That went basically straight across the bottom of the CHRA, which is this side. You can tell that it's the bottom because there's the oil fittings on this side. There's the uh, intake and the output for the coolant fittings. So the side that doesn't have anything uh, is the bottom to me as far as I'm concerned. And then with the dowel pin, uh, once I install the compressor housing and go ahead and get all that put on, the turbine housing will be on there. Everything will be properly clocked. Now, I know I did mention at one point, you will see the markings here, right? But again, it's just, I know this is the bottom and I know that the line was on the bottom. So when I mark these up, or excuse me, match these up, I'll be able to see where the bolts were and that can have that perfect clock for when it's uh, gonna get installed. You don't have any fitment or interference issues whatsoever. So let's get started.
Okay, so everything is installed obviously aside from the turbine housing. We'll get to that later. And then uh, the clamp and the reason that they put the clamp on is probably just because I don't really want to deal with it until I put the, uh, the main housing on. So uh, I did not torque the three bolts for the wastegate because I'm pretty confident I'm going to have to remove that uh, to get the compressor, excuse me, the turbine housing back on. But the main reason I put them on now is because now that everything is completely assembled, I want to basically just kind of give a listen. I'm going to make sure that I don't have any uh, shaft play, either actually or laterally, uh, and then make sure I've got no grinding, no no noises, whatever the case is, and uh, make sure the turbo sounds like it's ready to rock. Okay, that's about all I've got for now. Uh, the last thing that I'm not gonna do on video is I do recommend that you take a little bit of grease and you install that, just a little bit of grease uh, inside these fittings and you leave the clip in because the way that the line is, you can basically just push it in and it clicks in place as opposed to putting it in and then inserting the clip when it's uh, really inconvenient. So I'm gonna put a little bit of grease in these and then uh, leave the clips in place so that they're ready to just insert and call it a day. Okay, so I got everything cleaned up and uh, I got the studs removed from my outlet flange. Um, gonna go ahead and do a quick video on reassembling this, completing all the last pieces. Gotta take this clip off, remove the nut, reinstall the uh, turbine housing, and then put the clamp on. She's ready to rock. Okay, all done, ready to go in.